Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss an interesting concept of non-zero types in Rust. Non-zero types in Rust represents a value that guaranteed to be never zero. So you input a number. If it's zero, it's not allowed and is set to none. If it's non-zero, you get your value. So basically, it's enforced by the type system that non-zero, as the name suggests, the type cannot contain zero as a value. Now let's take an example and understand what exactly is a non-zero type and why do we even need it and how it enables zero cost optimizations. Let's say we have a number as 10 and then we just use it or print it and we get our number. And when we set it to zero, we get zero printed as it is. Now let's extend our example and try to feel the need of non-zero types. So as you can see in this example, we have total and the users and then we have average request and what we do basically is just check if the users is zero, uh, then we return none, otherwise we return some. So because of just the number itself can be zero and as we know we cannot divide by zero, we have to return an optional result and also add an extra check on if the users are zero. So all of this just because you want to uh, ensure that your program doesn't crash. And now if you run this, it gives you invalid user count because this is where your code goes as the users is zero. Now we know our program can feel the need of having non-zero types. So let's understand now what exactly is non-zero type. Non-zero type you get from standard number grid. So you have u32, u size, u64 and all other different variants that you have for integer or numbers in Rust. So what you can do is new 10 and once you run this program, as you can see, it gives you a sum 10. So it automatically wraps in sum. But what if we set it to zero? Then it automatically gets to none, which is something as we discussed right here. If it is zero, it's basically not allowed and sets to none. But if it's non-zero, you get your non-zero value right here now one might think hey wait a minute i can get the same behavior with optionals as well right yes definitely we can use optional but remember in optional your zero still remains as zero and you need these extra conditions or checks before taking average or any such computation or even using because at times you don't want to use zero as the value or none what you want is some positive value or some value based on your use case that you want to use. So again, yes, you can use optional and you will get your result. But remember, you need this extra condition as well. Otherwise, so let's say if we don't put this and we pass right here and right here, boom, your program made an attempt to divide by zero and it crashes. And that's exactly where non-zero types help you. As you can see, our code is more clean and simple. And then we, even if we try to set it to zero, it will just run this expect because, you know, none. And then we run our expect to give us, give us the error. Users must be non-zero. So this is just one of those cases, but you can think of endless others where uh, a non-zero type will save your day. Also, another interesting point, your non-zero type is not just superior over your optional just because your non-zero type hides your zero and gives you that none or clean interface that ensures your sum value won't be zero always. But it also is very cheap on memory. So as you can see, we have size of U32, optional U32 and a non-zero U32. And if we run this, as you can see, the size of U32 is four. Your optional U32 is eight, it doubles. But your non-zero U32 has the same size as your original or default type. Why is that? Let's understand. But as you can see, it is basically cheap on your memory as well to use non-zero type instead of an optional type for the same purpose. And here's why our non-zero types are cheaper. So you have your non-zero U size or U32, the range is one to max. And if zero is unused, then zero is reused as none. So there's no extra tag required. But in case of your simple optional use size, the value can be zero to max instead of one to max. No unused value. There's no literally value that can be used in place of a tag. So there is extra tag. Now none or there is some stored value. So none as a tag in the memory or 
some stored value. So that's why you can see the size of the optional U32 is 8 instead of size of U32 which is 4 bytes and non zero which is 4 bytes. So it basically just doubles your memory. So you can simply use this smart trick of using non zero where you, you can simply by just ensure that you can reduce your memory size. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys understand and learn something new, some new concept. If you do, try it out on your end and let me know in the comments what do you think and share with your friends. I'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic. Until then, bye-bye.